Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's Pastor Alex here sitting in my office room at home on this uh, snowy and cold day at the time that I'm recording this for you. It's good to be with you all where you're at this morning. Um, uh, this is being pre-recorded, but uh, I am watching and praying along with you all uh, this morning, and it's always a little bit of a treat when um, the pastor gets preached to. It is a little weird when it's the pastor uh, preaching to the pastor, uh, but it's a, a gift and a grace from God nevertheless. Uh, we're going to worship this morning, and just to give you a little bit of the, the layout, um, uh, we will uh, do some reading of scripture, we'll have some song tracks, there won't be any vocals on it, but there will be lyrics, you'll be able to follow along and, and sing some of those songs with us. Uh, I'm going to preach as best as I can, I'm a little congested, my ears are a little plugged up, but other than that, I'm, I'm feeling okay. So, we're going to worship the Lord this morning, and we're going to begin uh, by receiving a call to worship. Um, yesterday was New Year's Day. And so in light of that, we have a, a call to worship that is inspired by a couple of New Year's Day uh, texts uh, from Matthew chapter 11 and from Revelation 21. I invite you just to receive this call to worship. Come all who are weary of wealth, of poverty, of power, of struggle, of division. Come all who are heavy laden with too much, with too little, with anxiety, with fear, with anger. Come all who have hope for liberation, for peace, for freedom, for the kingdom. Hear these words of Jesus. See, I am making all things new. Let's pray together this morning as we begin our time of worship. Ever calling God, we give thanks that you have gathered us into your church and graced us with your faithful presence. We ponder our history, ancient and still developing, and marvel at the many expressions of your church. Grant us the vision to be a part of, of a new reformation for that church that will bring ever more joy and justice to the world and continue to gather us, this diverse group, into Jesus' vision and dream that your faithful people may be one in you. O oh God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We're going to uh, begin by singing a Christmas hymn this morning. We are still in the season of Christmas. There are 12 days of Christmas, as you all know from the song. Um, and, and if you still have your Christmas decorations up, that's awesome. You, you have until uh, Thursday to, to keep them up and to celebrate, but you got to take them down on Thursday. I'm kidding, of course. Um, and one final note before we begin singing this morning, um, being that this is my home, uh, there are many home sounds that you're probably going to hear. You'll probably hear the sound of uh, the heat. You might hear the sound of our dog trotting around, uh, going crazy because it's snowing outside. You may even hear the sound of Francis running around and causing a ruckus. Um, this is a home and you will hear the sounds of home. And that's good because within the home there is the Lord. So as you, uh, as you hear these things, try not to be distracted by them if you can. And remember that the Holy Spirit is among us this morning as we sing and as we hear God's word. Let's begin by singing this morning.
Well, friends, as we prepare to hear the word of the Lord this morning, I invite you to pray with me that God would illuminate our hearts and open our minds to what he has to say to us. Let's pray together. O God of light, you have revealed your very self to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, your word made flesh, who lived among us full of grace and truth. Lord, open us to your revelation once again, that in the words of your holy scripture we might know your presence and follow in your light always. Amen. Our Old Testament reading and our sermon passage for this morning comes from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 7 through 14. Hear the word of the Lord. The Lord proclaims, Sing joyfully for the people of Jacob. Shout for the leading nation. Raise your voices with praise and call out, The Lord has saved his people, the remaining few in Israel. I'm going to bring them back from the north. I will gather them from the ends of the earth. Among them will be the blind and the disabled, expectant mothers and those in labor. A great throng will return here. With tears of joy, they will come. While they pray, I will bring them back. I will lead them by quiet streams and on smooth paths so they don't stumble. I will be Israel's father. Ephraim will be my oldest child. Listen to the Lord's words, you nations, and announce it to the distant lands. The one who scattered Israel will gather them and keep them safe as a shepherd, his flock. The Lord will rescue the people of Jacob and deliver them from the power of those stronger than they are. They will come shouting for joy on the hills of Zion, jubilant over the Lord's gifts, grain, wine, oil, flocks, and herds. Their lives will be like a lush garden. They will grieve no more. Then the young women will dance for joy. The young and old will join in. I will turn their mourning into laughter and their sadness into joy. I will comfort them. I will lavish the priests with abundance and shower my people with gifts, declares the Lord. And friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament reading is found in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. Bless the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing that comes from heaven. God chose us in Christ to be holy and blameless in God's presence before the creation of the world. God destined us to be his adopted children through Christ Jesus because of his love. This was according to his good will and plan, and to honor his glorious grace that he has given to us freely through the Son whom he loves. Friends, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now I invite you to open your hands in a posture of humility to receive the reading of our gospel, which comes from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5 and verse 14. Hear the gospel of the Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. The Word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Friends, the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you today for your presence. We thank you that you are with us here in this time. We thank you that you are uh, with those of us who are feeling ill. God, wherever we're at today, however we're feeling, we pray that you would dwell among us once again through your Spirit, and that you would open us up to your Word, that we might be uh, rejuvenated, that we might be encouraged, that we might go forth in this world boldly, ready not only to proclaim your good news, but to exemplify the love of Jesus Christ in our lives as we are sanctified through and through on this journey that we are walking with you, God. 
We love you, Lord, and we welcome you in this time and in our places to bind us closer together, even as we are keeping our distance this morning. We pray that you would be with us. Amen. Well, friends, we have crossed the threshold into another year, and over the last few days, you've probably heard a lot of folks talking about new things, New Year's resolutions, new opportunities, and new hopes for the year, maybe even new beginnings, you know, or, or the end of something, at least. There's a famous quote attributed to the Roman philosopher and statesman Seneca who uh, uh, said, and this is a, a phrase that I think of because it was popularized by a band in the late 90s called Semisonic, he said, every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. I think a, a cynical person might hear something like that and respond, yeah, I, I guess, but is it really a new beginning or is it just the same old story, different chapter? I think that's a fair and reasonable question to ask, a fair and reasonable response. Because, after all, 2022 already looks similar to 2020 and 2021 in a variety of ways. New cases of the coronavirus are surging all over the country. Wildfires are continuing to wreak havoc in the western part of the country, this time in the state of Colorado. And we pray for those uh, folks who are being affected by those fires uh, today and in the past few days. There's political and economic and social crises unfolding all across the world and including in our own country. And in the world where God is working redemption, a world to which Christ warmly assures us, as we heard in our call to worship, see, I am making all things new. Well, it can simply be difficult at times to recognize the new beginnings that are unfolding, that are at hand in our world. I suppose that's one of the reasons that I, I like uh, the New Year's celebrations. I've always wanted to, to go to New York and be in New York for New Year's, maybe not necessarily in Times Square, but to just be in that city for New Year's. My wife has done that once or twice during the time that she and her family lived in upstate New York, and she assures me that it is very, very, very overrated. But nevertheless, one day I would like to do that. But one of the reasons I love the New Year's celebrations is it's one consistent moment every single year, even during a pandemic, where we don't have to struggle to recognize the end of something and the beginning of something else. I think that the followers of Jesus need, need to develop an ever-growing recognition of new beginnings, the, the reality that new beginnings are unfolding all around us. I contend that it's essential even to our witness as followers of Jesus, as well as our spiritual health and our spiritual well-being. It's essential that we continue to become more aware and appreciative of the many ways in which God is indeed making all things new. And in the Church of the Nazarene, we understand that as essential to our identity. Every once in a while, uh, I like to retell the story of how the Church of the Nazarene got its name. Um, it's critical to understanding who we are. Um, we, we were uh, beginning as a denomination by ministering to a variety of peoples from marginalized communities who were dealing with all sorts of issues and challenges uh, and hardships within their lives. And, and as the, the early church of the Nazarene, the group that would become the church of the Nazarene was ministering to these folks, they couldn't help but remember a story from the first chapter of John, uh, just a little bit after the, the New Testament reading from John that we had, or the gospel reading that we had from John this morning, uh, one that takes place in uh, verses 45 and, and 46 where after one of Jesus' early followers, Philip, goes to his friend Nathaniel and says, Hey, we have found the Messiah. It's Jesus of Nazareth. Nathaniel scoffs and, and wonders aloud, Is there anything good that can come from Nazareth? 
And, and Philip persists to Nathaniel and says, well, come on and see. Come and see for yourself. And that's where he encounters Jesus. And that's where Nathaniel first begins to recognize that something good, something new, is at hand in his life and in the, and in the world around him through Jesus. And the early members and the founders of the Church of the Nazarene looked at that passage and they looked at the, the community to which they were ministering, the world in which they were living and being ministered to themselves. And they could hear the voices of people all around them saying, come on, folks, is there anything good that can come out of this community or that community, the community dealing with this issue, with this challenge, with this hardship, is there really anything good that can come out of them? And the early church of the Nazarene said, well, yes, yes, of course. It's a simple but difficult truth for us. Following Jesus closely and faithfully requires that we anticipate new beginnings in our lives. It requires that we anticipate those things in our lives, in the church, including our local church here in, in Leavenworth, and in the world entirely. And so with all of this in mind, we may wonder this morning how we can start off this new year, and we are on day two of this new year, but how do we start off this new year well? We may wonder how we can welcome the new beginnings that are already at hand in a way that's not only spiritually healthy and faithful to the way that Jesus calls us to follow, but especially a way that enables us to be uh, perhaps receptive of God's presence. Certainly these aren't very simple questions to ask, but I, I do maybe have a simple or at least an overly simplified answer to them this morning. We need to be ready to encounter God in this new year. We need to be ready as faithful followers of Jesus, as Nazarenes even, for the good things and the new beginnings that God is going to bring about this year. That is how we can start off the year well. The prophet Jeremiah, like most of the prophets before and after him, preached a message of readiness. In 2021, we learned a little bit about the situation into which Jeremiah was called to prophesy during our summer series on the minor prophets. Jeremiah wasn't a minor prophet, but he did live in the same time as many of them. And before Jeremiah, there was the kingdom of Israel, a united monarchy, and we remember that that, that kingdom split into two. There was the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. And over the next couple of centuries after that split, those two nations would gradually embrace political and economic and social power over faithfulness to the covenant that God had established with them. And the results were tragic and disastrous. Not only did they begin to worship and share their allegiances with false gods, false deities, they also fundamentally abandoned their social responsibilities. Because rather than care for the poor, the orphans, the widow, and the foreigners who were in their midst, they neglected and took advantage of them. They would even take them to court to try to squeeze out every last bit of resources, money, or possessions that they could possibly get from them. And worse, maybe, they, they fully gave themselves over to a delusion, a delusion that they could thrive, that they could be protected, that they could be powerful, that they could be great if they worshipped God, the God of their ancestors, even while they did all of these things that were unfaithful to the covenant of God. But the prophets came onto the scene with a very, very simple message, a very simple but stern warning. No, 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 no. If you don't change, then this isn't going to end well for you. It doesn't matter how many sacrifices you offer. It doesn't matter how many songs you sing. It doesn't ha matter how many times you go to God and say, well, Lord, remember when you did this for our people? Remember how we have worshipped you since this time? We see 
the standard prophetic pattern in Jeremiah's message to the Israelites in Judah. He called them to repent of their sins and their delusions. He warned them of the very real, very dire consequences for their refusal to repent. And, and he confronted the powerful and the influential, and he explained how their behavior had essentially fractured the covenantal relationship between themselves and God, and that they'd be subject to God's judgment through the, brutal, through the brutality and the conquest, the military conquest of the Neo-Babylonian Empire led by Nebuchadnezzar. You all remember Nebuchadnezzar, especially from uh, the, the stories in the, the book of Daniel. But a little more than halfway through the book of Jeremiah, the prophet's message takes a bit of a turn from the, the direness and the, and the warnings and it becomes something else. Chapters 30 to 33, these four chapters, make up a section in the book of Jeremiah called the Book of Comfort, because within these chapters, the prophet offers a vision, a vision of reconciliation between the people and God, a vision of restoration, that God was going to lead the community to restoration, even while they are in exile. And our passage this morning, Jeremiah 31, verses 7 to 14, was a message that was especially meaningful for the remaining few Israelites who lived through the trauma of Jerusalem's destruction and the journey into exile in Babylon, alongside also the Israelites who were born into exile and who experienced many of the same issues that countless generations of displaced people and refugees have experienced even today. Jeremiah combines two important metaphors to describe how God was going to give them a new beginning, a beginning that wouldn't be defined by uh, chaos and destruction and exile. The first image that we see is of God as a shepherd. We see in verses 7 through 10, Jeremiah using the language of leading and quiet streams and smooth paths for walking. It evokes the language of the Psalms, especially Psalms 23 and Psalms 95. Uh, and also Isaiah. Isaiah ministered uh, to the northern kingdom of Israel before their destruction um, uh, or ministered to Israel and Judah before Israel's destruction in 722. And uh, Isaiah 40, verse 11, depicts God as a good shepherd who leads the sheep to, to safety and to comfortable places and who seeks out and finds lost sheep and brings them home. And that is who God is, not just according to Isaiah, but especially Jeremiah here. God is the kind of God who's always on the move, retrieving the lost and leading them to safety, that they might have new life indeed, so that the sheep can live life fully, as Jesus himself would later say. The second image that we see is of God as an adopting parent. And, and in verse 9, we see this image explicitly as Jeremiah describes God as the Israelites' father. And yet, unlike uh, most parents, God is a, a little different because, for one thing, Jeremiah describes the community of God's firstborn children, the children at the front of the line when it came time for inheritance, not as strong and healthy and powerful children, but as vulnerable people. It is the disabled and the pregnant women who are going through labor who are described as uh, those who receive God's inheritance, those who have been moved to the front of the line, so to speak. The Israelites who heard these words from Jeremiah's message first would have immediately thought of the exodus because that was a time when God did take a, a people who were forgotten and, and maybe um, abandoned, it would seem, or abused, and, and would take them and make them into something remarkable. Literal slaves in Egypt becoming the people of the one true God. God is the kind of parent who takes those who are neglected, those who are even forgotten altogether, and those who are suffering greatly in this world, and makes them his most important children. 
the claimants of God's greatest promises. God gives them a new beginning, Jeremiah tells us. And can you see why this message was so important for the Israelites and why it's important for us today? No matter what's happened to us, no matter who we've been in this past year, there's hope. There is hope for the future. And the reason there's hope for this year and for all the years to come is because of who God is. By God's own nature, God is one who is love and mercy and whose love and mercy leads to reconciliation and restoration and new beginnings. The kind of new beginnings that change not only our circumstances in the world, but most importantly, the way that we see God and other people and even ourselves. Perhaps this is the reason that Jesus taught us a radical way of loving God and loving our neighbors, because if we can embrace God's love for us, and if we can release God's love to the neighbors and to, to those all around us in the world, then the future will be bright with God's light. The work of God will be unmistakable to us, bright as day, and we will see ourselves for who we really, really are. We are followers of God, walking behind Jesus Christ on a new adventure in life, one which takes us toward and into the, the community of the great mystery that is God. God is a, a mystery to us, and Jesus leads us into the presence of that triune God. You know, as I was praying and writing uh, for this message this week, God stuck an old song in my head, and it's one I still can't get out of my head even right now. Uh, a song that was penned by Curtis Mayfield and performed by his group The Impressions in uh, the mid-1960s, a song called People Get Ready. And it's a song that was written at the height of the American Civil Rights Movement in the mid-1960s, during that era when many southern states were using legal mechanisms at the local and at the state level to prevent black Americans from being able to vote. And Mayfield could sense that there was something incredible that was about to happen, something that was about to change, a new beginning on the immediate horizon in the United States for black Americans. And by the providence of God, a new beginning, a new era did in fact unfold in 1965, the year the song was released, because in August of that year, the uh, Voting Rights Act was enacted, the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Uh, unfortunately, uh, however, in, in 2021, much of the Voting Rights Act was uh, dismantled uh, shamefully by uh, our current uh, Supreme Court. We prayed to God uh, that a new provision would arise to continue to protect the vote of all people who have the right to vote in this country. But in Mayfield's song, I'm reminded of one last important piece of Jeremiah's words to us, maybe the heart of this very message. God is going to continue to make all things new in 2021, just as God made something new happen for the Israelites after their fall, after the destruction of uh, their, their, uh, their state after the destruction of the temple and the city of Jerusalem itself and after their exile. But there is one critical question that they had to ask themselves, one critical question we have to ask ourselves. Are we ready? Are we ready for God's love and grace to come roaring like a train in our lives and in our our families' lives, and in the life of our community, and in the world itself this year in 2022? Are we ready for the new beginnings, the new encounters with God this year? Are we ready for these things? And if not, well, there is still time to get on board that train. In 2022, we need to be ready, ready to remain behind Jesus on the smooth and straight path. You know, Jeremiah's word of hope and comfort is offered specifically to those who remain 
in God, even in the midst of their pain and their terrible struggles. And this year, most, if not all of us, will experience moments that truly challenge us, maybe even moments that shake our faith. But God's invitation to us is to remain behind him this year, no matter how challenging the path may seem, no matter where God leads us, even if it's into the darkest valleys where the shadow of death itself lingers. We can remember the words of Jesus, the words that make us ready for this year. Remain in me, abide in me, and I will remain, I will abide in you. In 2022, we need to be ready. Ready to return to God when we stray from the path, when we don't love God or our neighbors fully, when we do not take up the radical way of love that Jesus has for us, that Jesus has instructed us to live, a way that leads to carrying a cross in this world. The good news is that God is in the business of loving and forgiving and reorienting our hearts and lives. We are a holiness people, and we believe that God reorients our lives around holiness, His holiness. We need to let God do this this year. And we will let God do this this year if we are ready for God to work. In 2022, we do need to be ready, ready to be rescued and to be redeemed by God. Without question, we've faced unprecedented challenges over the last couple of years, and it's possible that we will continue to face these, cha these challenges and maybe even some new ones. And yet the Lord has been faithful to us over the last couple of years. The Lord has provided for us and enabled us to meet each other's needs. God has done something truly wonderful in our community. So much in this time, in this world that we live in, is made up of uh, uh, discussions about power and size and ability. And yet this church, our community, a, an average size one by the standards of the American church, but small sometimes in our own eyes, is one that has done incredible things this past year. God has done incredible work through this community. We are reminded that it is not about size, and it is not about strength, and it is not about appearance. It is rather about God's power in our weakness, as the Apostle Paul reminds us. God will continue to be powerful, to be a rescuer, to be a redeemer in our midst, if we allow God to do that for us. The Lord has used each and every one of us and has used our little family community exactly how it looks right now to share God's love to our neighbors and to shine God's light into our community and in our world. God's going to continue doing this, these things if we allow, allow God to do it and if we desire to see it happen. We need to be ready, ready to rejoice in the ongoing work of God. So long as God is who God is, light will always be found in the darkness. And rest and joy will always be found in the midst of hardship and suffering. And laughter and dancing will always break through, even in the times of grief and tears. That is something that the psalmists write about quite explicitly. I think especially in one of my favorite psalms, Psalms 126, a psalm that may uh, in fact reflect upon what God did in bringing the Israelites back from exile which Jeremiah anticipates. When the Lord released our bonds, we were like those who had dreamed. Our, laugh, our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongues with shouts of praise and joy. God is indeed making all things new. God is indeed giving us a reason to shout for joy and to laugh and to dance even in this time. Even as I sit here to you congested and trying to speak and get through all of this, I have a reason to be joyful because God is making all things new already in this world. And I know God is going to renew uh, my health and the health of my family in due time. But whatever happens in 2022, God will continue to make all things new. 
We just need to be ready. Ready to work with God, ready to get on board with what God is doing in the world. Even when getting on board with what God is doing feels like a train that's taken us to new places and on unfamiliar tracks. But we can do this. We can because God is good and because God is going to be with us. I leave you all in this message with the opening verse of Curtis Mayfield's song, People Get Ready. People get ready. There's a train a coming. And you don't need no baggage. You just get on board. All you need is faith to hear the diesels humming. You don't need no ticket. You just thank the Lord. Friends, get ready for this new year and for what God is going to do. And may you thank the Lord and rejoice in your hearts and in your lives. Amen. Before we close our service this morning, uh, we are going to pray as a community and I invite you where you're at in this time, whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching this on a, a delayed uh, showing, uh, to pray with us. We know that wherever two or three are gathered, Jesus says, so the Lord is with them. The Spirit of God is with us. Well, we are gathering in a variety of places, and the Spirit is connecting us in this time like a giant web, and that is a beautiful thing, a good reminder of how great and wonderful our God is. So let's come together in this time as one body with one voice to cry out to our Lord, to offer prayer and thanksgiving to God, to lift up those in our community around us, and to hold each other close in our hearts. Let's pray together. Oh, gracious Lord, we thank you for this new year. We thank you that you continue to be with us, that you continue to lead us in this world. Even in the midst of hardship and suffering, in the midst of sickness and challenges, we know that you are a faithful God and that you do not forsake us. We come together, Lord, as one voice to praise you and to lift up those in our community who need your healing and care today. 
We especially lift up uh, the Herzog family, and we pray especially for Judy in this time. We lift up her brother, Carol. We lift up Mike and Linda Mears, and we lift up uh, Jerry and Darlene Means as well. We lift up the Blockberger family. We pray for Ron and, and uh, that you would continue to bring healing to his body and that you would continue to guide his doctors on the next steps for bringing healing. We lift up Ron's brother, Henry, that you would continue to give him rest and the ability to recover after surgery. And we lift up Matthew and Cheyenne Blockberger as they continue to grieve the loss of a family member. We lift up John Willingham. We lift up uh, Viola and Mark Budd, that you would continue to show the three of them mercy, that you would continue to reveal your love to them. We lift up Chuck and Charity Cunningham. We pray that you would continue to Chuck, uh, touch Chuck's body. We lift up Andrew Wyatt and Audrey Combs. We pray that you would bless them and bless their family. We lift up Jolene. We lift up her children as well, that you would continue uh, to lead her and to guide her. We lift up uh, Lee Roberts or Lee Robertson. Uh, we lift up Gladys and Ralph Porter. We lift up the Sprung family. We especially pray for uh, Suzanne and Brian's grandson Isaac and his family. We lift up the Thomas family. We pray that you would bring continued uh, uh, recovery and healing to Darlene's body. We pray that you would continue to be with the family, to sit close with them as they continue to grieve Larry's death. We lift up the James family for protection and blessing as Rob continues his service. We lift up the Eric's family. We lift up the Enamark family. We lift up our sisters, Joan Teeters, Trisha Bond, and Betty Schirmbeck, Shirley Christie, and Lucille West. We lift up Jim and Janet Ramey for continued guidance and, and mercy for their own health. We lift up our brother, Charlie Mullins, we lift up Connie Holt's family. We especially pray for those in, in her family who are really, really struggling in this time, that you would reveal yourself, that you would surround them with the love and the grace of community. We lift up our sister Jane Kimball. We lift up uh, Renee's sister Yvonne. We lift up our friend Jason. And we lift up uh, our sister Kara as she and her siblings grieve the loss of her mother, Christine. We pray today as they lay her to rest that you would be present with them. Lord, in your great wisdom and in your incomparable love, have mercy on all of these, your beloved children, and continue to protect us, God, as we all strive through this pandemic. Be with our doctors and healthcare workers. Be with those who are suffering from the virus and be with those who are grieving and lamenting the loss of friends and loved ones to the virus. O oh, Creator, continue to bless and sustain us through your healing work and through your gift of medical science. We pray, God, for our community, the Leavenworth Church of the Nazarene. We pray for our community of faith all across the world. God, guide us in your wisdom as a denomination. Uh, guide us... Uh, as a, a people who are following you, we especially lift up our district leaders, our uh, denominational leaders, our international leaders, and our office personnel. We pray that you would bless and protect our missionaries who are serving faithfully around the world. We especially pray for uh, our friend Jay and his family serving in Central Europe. We pray that you would continue to stir the hearts of the people in Poland and all across Europe. We pray that the, the nations would continue to come to you and that you would provide workers for the harvest, Lord. Lord, we pray for provision and wisdom, uh, for uh, compassion for our churches here in Leavenworth. We pray that you would equip the leaders of our community and of our government of the local, state, and federal level with what they need to lead compassionately and with wisdom. We pray for mercy for all of those who are traveling this week, especially those who are uh, traveling through winter weather or through dangerous places in our country. We pray for encouragement for all who are experiencing a season of transition and uncertainty. We pray for protection for our teachers and our child care workers, that they could continue to serve our communities well. We pray for protection for our active duty family members, 
friends and neighbors, that they might continue to serve our country. And Lord, we continue to pray for protection for our firefighters and our first responders who are responding to the wildfires throughout the country. We pray that you would bless and protect not only them, but the people who are affected by these fires. God, would you raise up provision for them where provision is needed? Would you raise up encouragement for them where encouragement is needed? And God, may you remind them that you are a Lord of new beginnings. God, continue to shape us all into the image of Jesus Christ, that we could love and seek your presence throughout our communities and within our neighborhoods. And Lord, we pray especially that you would be with us amongst the poor, the orphans, the widows, the immigrants, the new neighbors, the elderly, the veterans, those who are suffering from mental illness, the homeless, and the sick. Lord, we ask you to hear these cries that we lift up to you, cries for binding up the injured, for healing the sick, for provision for those who feel empty, for reconciliation for the lost, for justice for the land and for the people, and for comfort for all whose hearts and whose faith may be broken today. And now, Lord, we take a few moments to call out to you the names of others for whom we are praying in this time. For these, Lord, hear our cries and have mercy upon us as we proclaim together as a people, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord, as we remember your love for these and for all of us, we join together as one body and one community that spans the world and spans time itself to pray as our Lord Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, friends, our service is about to conclude. Uh, just to let you know, um, as we uh, prepare to depart here, there will be um, about five minutes after the service where I will, where I will display uh, our announcements. Uh, if you uh, dropped in a little early, you probably saw those announcements uh, on your screen. They will appear once again at the end of the screen. You want to make sure that you check those out uh, because we do have some things coming up this week. Um, it was great to be with you all this morning. Uh, we are doing uh, much better. We are getting healthy. We are getting there. Uh, and we look forward to connecting with you all uh, this week in some fashion and certainly in person uh, this next Sunday. As you go, receive this blessing. May the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, and the grace of our Father be with you and guide you. May the Lord reveal himself to you today. And may the light of God shine in your world, in your home, in your family, in your community. And may it bring you life and warmth today. Friends, go in peace. Mm -hmm.